It's weird to think that a number of seances have been held here at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. In 1862, 11-year-old Willie Lincoln died of typhoid fever. The president and the first lady, Mary Todd, both spiraled into depression. Mary, desperate not to let go of her son, turned to spiritualism, the belief that one can communicate with the dead. Over the next few years, a slew of spiritualist mediums visited the White House and performed seances for Mary and U.S. congressmen. Mary believed that she had poked through the veil of the spirit world and discovered that Willie was still close. Abe wasn't convinced, but still politely sat in on a few seances. At that time, Mary Todd's interest in talking to ghosts wouldn't have been considered strange. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, spiritualism was ultra-popular in the U.S. and England. In fact, Lincoln's killer, John Wilkes Booth, attended seances after his sister died. The creator of Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, was also an ardent spiritualist. So too were the writers Elizabeth Barrett Browning and Rudyard Kipling. Even scientists like physicist William Crookes and the co-founder of evolutionary theory, Alfred Russell Wallace, were spiritualists. Because spiritualists rarely joined formal spiritualist churches, it's tough to get good numbers on just how many believers there were. Estimates of late 19th century American membership ranged from a few hundred thousand to 11 million, out of a total population of 25 million. It's easy to look at the ghost-talking phenomenon with a modern lens, through which it looks like a mere boom in silliness and superstition. Do you feel like there's ghosts around, or...? Yeah. Ooh, is that right? I feel there are entities in this house. I see. There's no question about it. But that kind of analysis ignores the real drivers and consequences of the era of spiritualism. The Civil War sparked a rise in spiritualist interest. The war had left 750,000 Americans dead, which is a lot of ghosts for grieving families to try to contact. Relatives of the dead turned to mediums and spiritualist literature for assurance that their loved ones still lived on. The popular spiritualist newspaper, The Banner of Light, published comforting letters that its authors claimed were written by the spirits of dead soldiers. Lieutenant Gilbert Thompson asked readers to inform my father, Nathaniel Thompson of Montgomery, Alabama, if possible, of my decease. Tell him I died eight days ago, happy and resigned. The Union private Caleb Wilkins assured his folks that the limbs doctors had amputated before he died later regrew in perfect spirit form. But Caleb Wilkins, Gilbert Thompson, and all of the other soldiers who rode into the Banner of Light had never died. In fact, they never existed in the first place. Unbeknownst to its readers, the newspaper had simply made up the names and details of soldiers. Regardless, such letters offered comfort and hope to actual families who had lost husbands, brothers, and sons. Spiritualism's promise of immortality and its usual non-belief in hell was a welcome alternative to strict Calvinist tradition. Many Americans not only took spiritualism seriously, they considered it scientific. In an increasingly secular late 19th century, spiritualism challenged skeptics to attend public demonstrations and see the quote-unquote proof of ghostly communication. For a fee, mediums appeared to channel spirits to levitate objects, produce sounds, and tell audience members information only the deceased individual should have known. During a time when the mysterious science of electricity first allowed people to communicate across thousands of miles through the telegraph, communication with a spiritual dimension didn't seem far-fetched. Spiritualists claim that ghosts harnessed electricity to communicate and interact with the material realm, a belief that still exists today. The spiritualism craze slowly died down in the early 1900s, as people like Harry Houdini vigorously exposed the tricks and illusions mediums used to convince people that they were contacting ghosts. While the view that mediums were charlatans who preyed on grieving individuals is fair, it ignores some of the positives of the spiritualist moment. Spiritualism had first taken hold among Quakers, a religion that greatly valued human rights and freedoms. Thus, spiritualism took on the mission of social reform from its outset, 
Mediums claim that the spirits of the dead advocated for egalitarianism among the living. This message attracted social reformists, especially in the industrialist North. Historian Anne Broad writes that every notable progressive family of the 19th century had its advocate for spiritualism, some of them more than one. Spiritualists led the so-called ultraist wings of the movements for the abolition of slavery, for the reform of marriage, for children's rights, and labor reform. Spiritualism also offered women equal opportunity and equal numbers within religious leadership. Women gained public speaking experience as spiritual mediums and then offered their talents towards securing women's right to vote. In 1870, almost all of the lecturers for the California suffrage movement doubled as spiritual mediums. As strange and exploitative as the ghost talking craze might have been, spiritualism organized and galvanized social reformers, and also encouraged women to take on leadership roles in the pursuit of equality. Hey guys, so if you like this content and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe or even consider donating to our Patreon page. The link's in the description below. We also want to give a special thanks to Chris Bendel for providing us with a ton of sources and giving us a lot of direction for this video.